Good morning, everybody. Let's sing, Eva. La 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 la. She likes the song. Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's July 15, Wednesday morning already, and uh, well, today we're still reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. We would now comment on today's Gospel for today's Mass, which is uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. Okay, here goes. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Very beautiful, short gospel for today that is packed and loaded with plenty of uh, meaning. First, let's, let's ask the question here. Is there anything wrong with being wise and learned? No, huh? no right? So why is Jesus rebuking uh, people here when he says, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned. See, it's though our Lord is saying, oh, you intelligent people, uh, you know nothing about what I am talking about because uh, these things have not been revealed to you. Is that what our Lord is saying? Eh? No, not quite. Far from it. See? Far from it. Right? Uh, the revelation that our Lord Jesus Christ came to, uh, to give is a, a revelation for everybody. Okay? It is a revelation of the Godhead, of the Trinity. He revealed God to us as a Father. Okay? Not just as the El Shaddai, Elohim or, or Yahweh, you know, uh, all of the sorts of other names and identities that God had in the Old Testament. When Jesus came uh, in the New Testament, the new revelation, the new covenant, he came to reveal God as Father. That God is our Father and he is God the Son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. And he also told us about the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit from which and from whom uh, emanates the love that is shared in the family of God, the Trinity. So two very important things that our, that our Lord uh, revealed here was the, the, uh, the, the fact that the Trinity is a family with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? And that the Father is a Father. He's not just some kind of God in a pedestal or up in the heavens that is detached from his children. No, God is a father. Okay, now, uh, but he's saying here that these kinds of things have been hidden from the wise and learned. But it has been revealed to the childlike. The childlike, not the childish, <laughs> not those who act like children uh, or and are immature. That's not what it means. But to the childlike, what does being childlike here mean? Hmm? It means that it has been revealed to people who live up to the virtue of innocence. And innocent children love to learn. Innocent children have the, 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 the attitude of always absorbing uh, uh, information. And they're always very willing to learn more without any biases, without any uh, filters 
without any uh, 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 suspiciousness in them. That's what innocence is all about. And our Lord is saying here that the revelation about God is welcomed more by people who live a childlike innocence than those who think of themselves as being intellectual, as being very wise, as being very learned, that really, you know, uh, they look at everything with suspicion. They look at every information and every piece of knowledge as suspect of being tainted with some kind of agenda or some kind of motive behind it, right? And such was the attitude of the Pharisees who did not welcome Jesus the way that he came to present himself. Okay? He came to present himself as a carpenter's son, poor, okay? uh, poor, uh, uh, as just like being among them. They were appalled by that and they could not accept and swallow that because in their heads, in their wise and learned heads, they have been studying the scriptures and going through all the Old Testament and their expectation is that they were going to have a king. Somebody was going to descend like, I don't know what, going to descend from the heavens in kingly royal fashion, being the son of David. And he was going to rule over Israel, get rid of the Romans. And so they, they had all of these preconceived ideas in their heads about what and who the Messiah was going to be. And then all of a sudden, he comes as a baby, a helpless baby coming into the world in a cave. Well, that doesn't quite fit their constructs, their intellectual constructs, right? Born poor to a poor family. Where is the palace? Where is the king? Where is the, the royal chariots to, to, to usher in this Messiah, this king? A baby born to a poor family from Nazareth? A carpenter's son? See how the Pharisees ridiculed him and said, Isn't this a carpenter's son? Don't we know him? Don't we know him from childhood? He was our neighbor here. How did he come up to have all of this knowledge and information and doing all of these miracles? Well, here is where we now realize that why, the reason why these so-called wise and learned and intellectual elite of the Jewish nation did not receive our Lord was not because our Lord was not telling them the truth. It was because they were too proud to accept the truth. They were too proud and cocky to open their minds and their hearts to the revelation that Jesus Christ was giving to them. Very bad, see? And the rest is history. We now know that because of this sin of pride and the cockiness of these Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees and the ruling intellectual elite of the Jewish nation, well, they did not accept Jesus Christ. This Messiah that they have been waiting for for centuries, who, when he finally came, was rejected by the very people who were supposed to be understanding uh, the, the scriptures better than everybody else, who were supposed to be teaching the scriptures to everybody else. They were the very first ones who rejected our Lord. But those who accepted our Lord were the childlike. The, 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 the people who are simple, the shepherds, fishermen, ordinary folk, who maintained a, a, a intellectual honesty and openness to receive the truth in full innocence, not giving in to any preconceived intellectually dishonest uh, uh, conception of how the Messiah was to come into the world. So what are we supposed to learn from this lesson? Number one, it's important to be intellectually honest to begin with. So intellectual honesty is a human virtue. 
Okay? It's a human virtue, intellectual honesty. We need to learn how to be intellectually honest and, and not, uh, not understand or perceive things in the world in a very opinionated way all the time. We need to study. <laughs> we were just talking about it in the breakfast table, right? We need to study. Study is another human virtue that we need to implement all the time. Okay? We cannot always be so opinionated and think of ourselves as sufficiently educated and sufficiently informed that we can just dish out information like, you know, we were the most important person in the room or we were the smartest person that we know everything. No, we don't. Okay? No, we don't. We don't know everything in the world that, that the world has to offer, especially everything related to God. We need a little bit of humility to understand that we need to keep studying. We need the constant virtue of study in order to keep ourselves intellectually honest so that we will have a better perspective of understanding what goes on in the world. Okay? Study, study, study. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, to tell you about myself, but you know what? I already have a PhD, okay, <laughs> and I have so many degrees uh, behind my behind my name, and I'm almost 60 years old. But hey, I haven't stopped studying. <laughs> study, study, study is an important human virtue. We cannot ever be complacent and say, ah, I know enough. Oh, I have a PhD. Ah, I, I, I know everything I need to know. I'll stop here. And I'm just going to dish out all the, inf all the, all the opinions I can, I can uh, ram down people's throats. No, sir. That's not a good uh, attitude. That's a prideful attitude. So we have to be humble. We have to be humble and keep learning and never stop learning. Okay? Read, 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 learn, and especially things related to the spiritual life. We have to keep studying. That is why study the catechism, right? I always tell you, study the catechism, study the catechism, study the doctrines of the faith. And that's one of the things we're doing here every morning. Try to understand our faith. Study, study, study. Humility, humility, humility. Very important virtue. We cannot go around this world being so cocky that uh, we think we know everything and we have the solutions to all the world's problems. Nope. And you see plenty of this on Facebook, you know, when you, <laughs> when you interact with people on Facebook. There's plenty of argumentum ad hominem going on on Facebook. People attacking each other. <laughs> not, not because, uh, you know, not for any other reason, but because there's intellectual bankruptcy. They don't know how to argue their points. They don't know how to make sense of what they're trying to push forward on Facebook. So what do they do? They just attack each other. See? So it's very funny. Very funny how people engage um, others on Facebook uh, and, and, and are actually brandishing for the whole world to see, well, their ignorance and their pride. See? Because there is nothing to what they say. Nothing. And, and there are plenty of people like that all over the world. So that is why we need to be humble. We need to be intellectually honest. We need to study. Okay? Study. Study. And study everything from our faith, from the catechism, from, from your own professional uh, um, disciplines. You need to keep studying. You cannot also just rest complacent and say, oh, I already have a PhD in my field. I don't need to study. I have master's already and I don't need to study anything else. Wrong. You know, you're being proud. So let us not be proud and cocky. Let's be humble and studious and learn. That way we will merit more graces from God and the reward of heaven. Okay, guys, that's it for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow again, hopefully. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye, Eva. Bye.